All right, this is page 12 of math analysis, and it's actually page one of notes two. And what we're gonna talk about now is right triangle trigonometry, which probably is a little familiar to you, hopefully. Um, so what I wanna start with is, we're all gonna draw our triangles basically the same way. So what we're gonna do is we are going to put the, uh, so what do I want? I'm gonna start with the horizontal. So we're gonna do this, then we're gonna go right angle here, and then here. And then we will put the angle that we're interested in. So let's say this is our right angle. The angle that we're interested in is going to go here. Okay. So I see that I've called it A in this case. So I'll name this A. Okay. So the reason we're part of the reason we're doing that, doesn't that kind of look like the angle that we're interested in, uh, which is right here, is in like standard position? Isn't that a good idea? Most things in the real world actually happen with like positive values, which means you should kind of be thinking of your triangles like in the first quadrant of the XY coordinate plane. So this is why we do it. And also, if we all draw our triangles the same way, we can all talk about them the same way. And it's just so much easier. So this is how I'm going to draw my triangle. Relative to A, this side is going to be opposite. So let's see, let's see how ambitious I'm going to be with this highlighting. So opposite, this side is going to be adjacent. So let's new color. And then no matter what angle you're looking at, the side opposite the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. So this is going to be the hypotenuse, right? So we have angle A, we have an opposite side, we have an adjacent side, we have a hypotenuse. Now the trig functions that I'm sure you have met before at some point in your life, so what color should I make the hypotenuse? I'm going to make the hypotenuse uh, this color, I guess. All right, so I'm going to highlight here just while, while I'm on the color. All right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is a lot of color. There we go. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. You basically need to memorize those. Uh, the most common way, I think, to remember those still to this day is definitely SOCATOA, SOCATOA, right? So you have to like really enunciate that the SO and the CA, otherwise it appears to be spelled the same way. I had a book at some point that was in a language that I didn't understand um, that someone had given me. And there was like obviously a little comic strip in it. And then the, the punchline to the comic strip was actually Toa Soka. And I have no idea why that might be funny in any language, not a clue. Um, it was like a Singapore math book. Um, so it might be related to something like that. Could just be that they rearranged it and they thought that was funny. I don't really know. But tangent is opposite over adjacent, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You have to remember those. If you can remember those, you can use those. We're going to use them all the time. We're going to use them to solve a right triangle. So what does it mean to solve a right triangle? It means we're going to find all of the sides and all of the angles, right? So there's six parts. There's three angles. There's three sides. We're going to find all the sides, all the angles. One of the angles will be a right angle, you know. Um, so let's see if we can do it. So we just got to get used to it. So this hopefully is review. Uh, let's, let's find out. So we're going to try, we're going to write our answers exactly, and then we'll use a calculator to get approximations. So two different things. The exact answer is as good as you'll ever get. The approximation is a decimal. Um, everyone wants that to be the answer or a number. Um, but really it's the exact one that is the best answer. So I'm going to start off. So what should we do? So by convention, the side opposite angle A is side lowercase a. The side opposite angle B is side lowercase b. And the side opposite, or opposite angle C is side lowercase c. So I'm actually going to start off. I'm going to find side C because I know two sides of a right triangle. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say that um, C is going to be the square root of uh, b squared minus a squared, which in this case means that c is the square root of 196 minus 36 
So C is the square root of 160, which like, honestly, you could just leave. I mean, if you want, some people really like, so 160 is 16 times 10, square root of 16 is four. So you could say that this is four root 10, what? Uh, four root 10, I don't think it matters. I don't think it's any better, right? But some people insist. So if you insist, go for it. Uh, all right, so we're in pretty good shape because if we wanna find, um, so say we wanna find angle A. Well, we're almost in good shape. We do need to know some stuff. So for angle A, uh, I wanna to try to use the given information as much as possible, always. If you can use given information, do it because as soon as you use information that you found, you might be kind of propagating your own error, right? Like taking an error you made, and you're gonna use it in the next part, in the next part, like that's a bad idea. Um, so I'm gonna to try to use the things that I know. So what do I know? I know this and I know this. Uh, so I'm gonna say that's opposite and hypotenuse. So I definitely know that the sine of A is equal to, so opposite over hypotenuse, so six over 14 which you could reduce. I'm not even gonna bother because to get an approximation, I would need to use a calculator anyway. But now, how do I get A out of sine of A? Like, how do I do that? Well, we know how to do that in general, right? If we take a function and we compose it with its inverse, it should give us the argument. So F of F inverse of X is equal to X. Um, so here, what I'll do is I'll just take the inverse sine of both sides, the sine inverse, of the sine of A should just collapse down to A, right? That's gonna give me just A. And then that should equal the sine inverse of six over 14, which you could simplify, whatever. Um, so A, based on this, A is sine inverse of six over 14. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, can I get I mean, B, we know it's 90 degrees, right? That's, that's basically given. Um, C, what do I know for C? Well, if I'm thinking about C, I know, I still know this side, right? Like that's given. I still know this, which is given. So I'm gonna say that actually that's the side that's adjacent to C and the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna say that the cosine of C is equal to six over 14. I'm gonna do the inverse cosine of both sides. I'm not gonna show that step. I'll just say that C is the cosine inverse of six over 14. I'm just using things that I was given, right? So I figured out what um, side C was. I figured out angle A, angle C. I actually, I think I solved this, the whole, the whole triangle thing. Um, so let's, let's summarize. Okay, so we're gonna have angle A, which is definitely equal to the sine inverse of six over 14, which is gonna be approximately something. We don't know what. B is 90, that's just given. C is exactly equal to the inverse cosine of six over 14, which will be approximately something. Um, side A was six, side B was 14. So say A is six, B is 14. Then we said C was um, the square root of 160. And then now I just need a calculator. So I'm gonna jump on the calculator and get these. Probably actually uh, stop the video after that because I don't want it to be too long. Um, so let's see. So we're on the calculator. Um, you can see this is the, the old stuff that we were doing. I think the calculator is actually maybe frozen right now. It is. Can I get out of the calculator and maybe just come back in the next video and do this part uh, and not screw up my whole video? Potentially. No, I can't because now the whole thing is frozen. I don't know what's going on. Let me share this. Back to this. Okay. Maybe you're looking at the notes right now. I'm going to try it one more time. Let's see if we can go to the calculator. It seemed to unfreeze itself at the end there. Uh, what are you doing? I don't know. New document? Sure. I need to be in degrees if this is even working. So I just click doc seven two. If you can't just click, I wanna do the inverse sign. So that's in the trig key. So trig um, inverse sign of six over 14, put a decimal point. So it'll give me an approximation. I'm gonna handwrite that in. 
So 25.377, so 377, three decimal places, always. Um, let's do the inverse cosine, inverse cosine of six over 14, put a decimal, 64.623. Okay, so what's nice is we could check and do 90 plus this plus this. We should get 180, and we do get 180. Um, so that means that we solved it. So I'm going to go back to the notes, hopefully, um, and you can take a look at this, and then I'll be back in the next video uh, to finish this page, I think. So it should just be like blowing through a bunch of problems. But in this case, we were given two sides. We immediately used Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Once we know the sides, Try to use the given information all the time, and then summarize your answers. Always summarize your answers. It says box all of your final answers. So I don't know, I'm gonna try to box around this. There's no like, oh, maybe there is a fast way to make a box. Hold on, let me, let me try that. Not, that. not that you need to be here for this, but I feel like if I can make a circle, I should be able to make a box. Become a rectangle. You didn't. You became a point. Blah. All right. There we go. Sad. There you go. All right. Those are my final answers for this. I'll be back in the next video to do a little bit more. So I will see you there.